You are now listening to the second podcast with. Who? Craig Jones. Who? Craig Jones. <laughs> and um, uh, having that guy around is the, the best thing that ever happened for the squad. El Segundo is back. Uh, I don't know what episode this is, but we're going to get right into it because we had a moment yesterday. We filmed the podcast yesterday, but then some crazy shit went down since then. So we scrapped that and we're going again. Take two. During the filming of the podcast yesterday, uh, as we're leaving, we're taking the cameras back. We hear of this commotion, this commotion out in the back car park here. And obviously uh, where we are situated in Austin isn't the safest area. We've got uh, parades of dangerous homeless people around and we've been victims of these homeless people in the past. They've taken my passport, they've taken my social security number. Uh, a good story about Nicky Rod. Nicky Rod, I don't know how this happened, but a homeless man stole his weapon, his, his fucking handgun, stole his part, what else, stole his, his chain, wallet, man, his, his chain. chain, his phone, and <laughs> his wallet as well. So because of that, we installed some 4K cameras out there to see what was uh, really what was going on out there. Shout out to Linux, because we do have 4K quality footage of the story I'm about to tell, but I'm not sure if we're gonna release that. We don't want anyone to get sued for what uh, just took place. The best part is that we installed the cameras and I was sitting in the staff room watching the cameras and I was like, I wonder what are the people walking behind the gym that could have possibly stolen Nicky Rod's handgun and it seemed to be mostly school children. So <laughs> that's definitely, <laughs> definitely something concerning that's gonna happen in the future. But we're gonna talk about Hassan Rita because he inflicted some street justice yesterday on a guy that was really trying to break into cars. He had a bit of, he had a bit of shit on him in the end. Yeah. Um, but what happened is, I'll tell it from our perspective, we leave this uh, podcast today, we're walking next door and uh, we hear the commotion. We go into the staff room, we, we think, oh, we'll go back, we'll watch the cameras. And what takes place, Heisen Rita is having a nap in our staff room here. We've got the <laughs> casting couch there. He's innocently taking a nap on the casting couch. So he's asleep. So he's not looking at the screen that has all the cameras on there. Obviously the cameras of the, uh, the gym, the back car park and some of the showers there, but he's asleep. And Gundal, our desk guy, Gundal also looks like a homeless man as well. <laughs> if you go back and watch Gundal Challenge Beaches, we had a, a staff battle take place. Obviously, he looks like Forrest Gump. He definitely looks homeless. And that, that matters to this story, right? Because Gundal's walking, he's entering through the back door, and he sees a guy in Hysam's back seat just gathering stuff up. The guy sees Gundal too, but obviously probably assumes looking at Gundal, oh, it's just another fucking homeless guy. We're all good here. This, like, this guy's not gonna do anything. He'll probably join in on the burglar, burglaring. So he comes in through the back door. He wakes uh, Hysam up. He says, hey, do you have a friend here or something? There's someone in your back seat. Hysam tears off outside. And we, I mean, we gotta, we gotta describe Hysam here. Six nine. Six nine shredded uh, definitely could be a male stripper actually a lot of ladies have said he's much more handsome than Nicky Rod Nicky Rod very upset about that we're actually encouraging Hysam after this to create an OnlyFans account <laughs> Freddie's going to help him take the photos and stuff um, I'm a fluffer as well you know a fluffer a, fl a fluffer as well yeah apply, with, apply to Freddie's uh, inbox if you would like to help him out on the fluffing here but yeah just describe him massive black guy where, where is he originally from uh, Ghana Ghana, yeah. moved to Mo Japan. Moved to Japan, judo black belt, right? <laughs> yeah. Just an absolute weapon of a human. He's the guy that took out Cyborg at ADCC first round. So he's been inflicting quite a bit of justice uh, in the jiu-jitsu community <laughs> for some time now. Beloved, uh, beloved figure in the jiu-jitsu community. He runs out the back door and he sees the guy going down the street with his stuff and he just pursues high speed. And the best part is his gundles behind him chasing as well, but just at a fraction of a speed. Hyson takes off miles ahead, catches the guy. He's trying to drag him back. The guy's sort of resisting here, I would say. I would say he's trying to resist, trying to get away. He's obviously freaking out. That's the last guy you want to see. Uh, chasing after you. Yeah, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that would be absolutely frightening for anyone here. Hysam, yeah, again, 6'7", running down the street, grabs him, hits him with a massive fucking Diyashi Harai 
I think probably broke the guy's leg at this point. <laughs> they, they're having a bit of a tussle on the ground. All the other guys run out from uh, B team that were there drilling at the time. Um, they, they run out and they gather around this guy, providing no help whatsoever really, leaving Hysom to handle this guy completely on his own. But again, Hysom was describing to me the look in the guy's eyes when he saw it was Hysom coming after him. And I don't know, it might have been a mixture of fear and sexual attraction there. But Hysom, I really, really wish he was wearing uh, the Keep Jiu-Jitsu Gay shirt because again, nothing would be more frightening than a a non-consensual sexual experience with Hysom Rita. Um, but yeah, he holds him down. I think he choked him out a couple of times, maybe popped the arm. Uh, Gundo, again, contributing nothing of value at all in this situation, simply calls the police. Shockingly, the Austin police do come pretty yeah. quick. I've heard some horror stories. They don't do much around here, but these guys that came were fucking absolute legends. They came, um, and as soon as they came, the guy started playing dead pretty much. Yeah, he wasn't was, moving for like 10, 15 minutes that I was out there. He was putting up a good fight, but again, I have some more details about the story. I have to say, he had excellent taste. He was wearing the TNs. He's had a bit more mileage on him than mine. Nike actually sent me, these, either, these are the shoes of choice in Australia for drug dealers, and again, I guess the shoes of choice for burglars here in Austin. <laughs> Obviously, he was not fast enough in these Nikes to get away from High Rita, unfortunately. But yeah, again, when we're talking about non-consensual sexual experiences with High Samrita, it brings me back to a story um, Declan Moody out of Adelaide told me. So Declan, he's competed in Japan a bunch, and obviously Hysam's from, uh, he lived in Japan for quite some time. And Hysam was telling me this story where they were competing in the gi, and Hysam's obviously super athletic, super explosive, he's moving around quick, Declan's trying to get some frames up, and he says he throws up two, two hands to frame, and he thinks he's grabbing on to uh, Hysom's arm. And he's like looking away, Hysom's trying to crush him. And then he slowly realizes that he's actually grabbing Hysom's dick with two hands. <laughs> a very frightening, uncomfortable experience for Declan. I remember him looking at me with fear, talking about the story afterwards. He said he thought it had a head on it and it was gonna bite him at some point. <laughs> but again, just a perspective on what could have obviously happened to this guy if Hysom Rita had uh, chosen that path. I, I always describe Hysom to people, I'm like, that's, that's not a guy you would want in your girl's history. Big time. That's definitely not the guy you'd want in your girl's history, but again, if you ask nicely, you definitely give her, you give her back for sure. But yeah, Hysom <laughs> Rita inflicting some serious street justice out here in Austin, and I'm just, yeah, again, so glad. I hope that's the guy that robbed, uh, robbed us. Um, again, he got my passport. I forgot to add it too. This this bastard actually, he got my Volkanovski championship uh, sweater. He stole that out the car as well. That was my prized possession at the time because I'd only cornered one UFC title fight and they give you the full gold tracksuit kit. And I remember I had it in the car and someone stole it and I was devastated. I was like, fuck, that's, that's heartbreaking. But again, if you guys see a homeless guy around Austin looking like a, uh, a UFC level championship fighter, please get that, uh, get that jacket. Wearing the tracksuit, wearing Nikki's chain. Yeah, <laughs> track- actually he's probably armed too, but you should take that risk for us or we'll send, we'll send Hysom in there. But in, I, really, Another good lesson about this entire story is the uh, the vehicle of choice Hysom's in. Yeah. He's in an old, beat-up Cadillac. And I really, I think this, uh, that's not a car you should rob. Because generally speaking, you're not going to find too many, uh, too many white guys driving Cadillacs. And if they do drive those Cadillacs, they're probably heavily armed individuals. But again, a good life lesson there. Don't rob from beat-up old Cadillacs. <laughs> But yeah, guys, please follow us. And we posted this yesterday. I think he's gained like 5,000 5, followers. Uh, obviously, mostly women and gay men at this point. But we'd appreciate some uh, jiu-jitsu athletes as well getting behind <laughs> Hysom Rita. Yeah, what a legend. Speaking of Hysom, actually, brings me to my next point. Um, a cuckold. A cuckold. You know what a cuckold is. What's a cuckold for those who don't know? For, all right, for those, for those that don't know, and I mean, I had to really do a deep dive on this because tradi- uh, traditionally, historically, cuckold has uh, a little bit to do with race. It would be typically be like they would talk about white guys wanting black guys to fuck their wife while they watched. And obviously, Hysom Rita, incredibly, again, incredibly handsome man, uh, 
we were asking him if he has ever had any requests like that. And then again, this is sort of in reference to the T-shirt. Obviously, you see some crazy shit floating around on the internet. You see some super funny stories. Yep. About uh, about things like this, but I really wanted to get into the to the terminology and really whether it would be cool to be a cuckold, you know. So like, if you're into watching your missus get plowed, you are the cuck. You are the cuckold. And interestingly, if you're the guy that bangs dudes' missus, you're a bull. So I'm thinking, perhaps merchandising idea, the Austin Bulls, the B Team Bulls. The B is perhaps for the Bulls. Again, we could rip off some Chicago Bulls sort of uh, gear in that sense, but I think it would be a big seller. But what I wanted to understand is whether, uh, do you think it is alpha? Are you the alpha or are you the beta, if you're the cuck or the bull? You're the, the alpha is the bull. Alpha is the bull. Absolutely, and you've got to be the beta. That's the, that's the watcher. The watcher. The guy sitting in the corner, just fucking watching. I mean, you could look at it from a few different perspectives. Maybe you're so alpha you don't give a fuck if someone plows your misses. Maybe you're so alpha you're like, no one could do a better job than me. Except Tyson. Yeah, I mean, obviously, except... Uh, Pink shoes to fill. <laughs> except the fucking 12-inch pipe and all. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting thought process. I was also trying to work out, do you think the cuck is more likely to be Republican or Democrat? got to be a Republican in this case. A Republican, yeah, yeah, true, true, true. In, in but the yeah. storyline. I mean, from my perspective, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with, I think, if you're the cuck, you're the alpha. I think that's a fucking top shelf position to take. I think you, obviously, you wouldn't be a guy that would be triggered or bothered by anything because for most people, uh, someone playing on your missus is probably one of the worst things that could possibly <laughs> happen to you. But if you're so comfortable with that and you're kind of into it, I mean... That does seem that does seem like a pretty alpha. That seems like a bold a bold move. No, it depends on what about does it change depending on who the bull is? It probably does change on depending on who the bull is, but also I think like if you are gonna pick the bull, that adds sort of a homoerotic flavor to the situation. You know what I mean? Because like I don't wanna I wouldn't wanna be the one like uh, judging another man on their caliber. I wouldn't want to be like, oh, no, you don't, you don't have what it takes to fuck my wife. You're not a handsome <laughs> enough man. That thing's either not big enough or too big. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, some guys might give your wife back in actually better, tighter condition than you left her. Some guys might bring you back a totally different woman. Interesting. What about if some of these guys are just like big Brazilian dudes? Big Brazilian dudes, yeah. I mean, yeah. Again, it's not something I've put too much thought into the nationality of the, the man that could potentially be banging, be banging your wife in this situation. But yeah, it is, it is an interesting topic for discussion. I think leaving the YouTube comments below, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, where you sit on this situation. Is the cuck the alpha, the beta? Is the bull the alpha or the beta? Because again, the bull is being told what to do. He's being, he's being blessed. He's being allowed to do it. Yeah. So, I mean, surely you'd want to appreciate it, you know? Yeah. Would you ever be the bull? Absolutely. I think a lot of guys would be quite comfortable with you being the bull. I don't think you're doing too much damage down there. <laughs> <laughs> Not if it's, I'm after Isom. After, if, I'm, if I'm waiting in line after Isom, there's no damage being done. <laughs> <laughs> From Ghana to Venezuela. <laughs> Now you you would be recruited after Austin to bring it to, to tighten things up again. You know what I mean? To bring it back to yeah. back to normal uh, depth and width. Just yeah, I mean it makes sense because then it transitions back to the original owner. You know. That's true. That's true. That's true. But yeah, I mean obviously interesting topic for discussion. I'm fascinated by the whole thing. I'm not sure if I could ever be either of them because again, like. I don't know if I'd want to be watched. I actually have a funny story about this. There was a guy in Adelaide that used to answer Craigslist ads to fuck, uh, to fuck, like just any sort of ads to fuck. And I remember he told me a story. I don't know if I should say his name. I don't even know if he's still alive at this point, actually. Yeah. If you're jumping on Craigslist or <laughs> yeah. entering some weird Probably sexual things, you're not going to have much longevity there. But he was telling me a story where he would uh, go around to fuck this guy's wife, right? And the guy would call his wife during it and listen to her getting oh. fucked and then put him on the phone and be, start asking him questions about, oh, are you enjoying it? Like, obviously, the guy's masturbating on the phone and stuff. But yeah, I don't know if I could be, 
either of those guys, to be honest. But it's bra I mean, it's brave, brave on the husband. That's a great husband. You know what I mean? If you had any uh, partner, family member that would ever let you do anything like that, I think that's probably about as as generous as you could get. That's like Gandhi level generosity. Yeah, trying to fucking keeper, I guess. To to keep someone happy like that. <laughs> Speaking of cuckolds, speaking of cucks, speaking of bulls, uh, you obviously got to be careful what you read on the internet. A lot of shit, anyone can post anything on the internet. You got a lot of sites where people could post this shit. I mean, people are posting strange shit on Instagram all the time. And something I would say, be, be very careful believing what you read on the internet. Unless, of course, it is from my fake accounts. I myself have been accused and am also perhaps a big fan of creating fake accounts, stimulating a little bit of controversy. Uh, no, nah, but seriously, people accuse me of creating fake accounts all the time. But again, I would never want to do that. I would want the satisfaction of it coming directly from the source. You know, like I like the idea of being brave enough to throw it down from the source, you know, like again, that's one of the greatest joys is trolling, but not just trolling, trolling people from your own account. Again, look at the shit I put on my account, and that brings us to the next business empire, B team. I say B team, but it's it's all me. These these fucking assholes can't come up with the t shirts designed to save their life. <laughs> the jujitsu is gay empire. We'll keep jujitsu gay empire. This is something we put forth. I've had this in the works for a while, right? I don't want to give uh, I don't want to give away the joke. This famous Austin tagline, that's where the joke comes from. Figure it out for yourself, tie dye. You know what I mean? But yeah, the Jiu Jitsu is Gay Empire. This has coincided with Pride Month. I'd like to say it was a well thought out, well planned uh, thing to bring this out in uh, Pride Month. But honestly, it wasn't. It was something we've had in the works for a while. I like to come up with ideas that will push the limits and I send it to people and I gauge their reaction. Sometimes I'd like to just show it to them because I, I want to see the look in their eyes when they're like, fuck, you can't be doing this, right? <laughs> Obviously, another example of that would be the uh, false reap accusations one. You, you want to show someone that. You want to see the look in their eyes and see whether you could potentially get away with it. Because, again, I think you can get away with everything. The keep jujitsu gay thing is really, again, dipping our toes into the woke business model, right? Because, again, if all these big businesses are doing this, they're doing it for a reason. Yep. They're doing it because they're making a lot of money. But I sometimes think there's people that work at some of these big companies like Bud Light and Target that are trolls themselves. Big time. Because it is fucking hilarious to see parents get mad about these shirts. I mean, the, the, the people that got the most angry with me, I would say parents, um, Brazilians. Brazilians. Brazilians fucking hate this shirt. Eh? And it, it's like, man, if, if you've shown a friend that doesn't do jiu-jitsu, you doing jiu-jitsu, he's definitely accused you of being gay. Like, what, we're wrestling with dudes here, you know? Like, you can't be too uptight about this. You have, to, you have to lean into the joke. And that's exactly what we're doing here. And I would also say, if you pull guard, you have no right at all to be angry about a t-shirt that implies jiu-jitsu is gay. You have absolutely no right at all. That's, in terms of what our sport is, that's one of the worst things that's the worst looking thing that happens in the sport, just conceding to you. But I say that as a guard pull on myself. I'm fascinated by what merchandising we can sell. Obviously, we have, we have a future of doing very, uh, very interesting, fun things. But again, what, what do you make of a, you see these, you see the comments. Uh, I won't say who runs the B team account. But Freddie gets to see some of the backlash and messages we get from some of our merchandise. We have some, we have some good ones over the weekend. <clears throat> a lot of uh, Brazilians, very, very upset, saying keep this out of uh, the sport. You know, closed guard is not gay. Um, all these things, we had a lot of- Close it guard, close it guard. Close it guard. <laughs> we had a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, interesting personnel go in there and speak about how this is a disgrace, a lot of I would say uh, Eastern Europeans, very upset. Uh, yeah, I think you really rattled the community with this one. Yeah, yeah, we rattled the cage here. I mean, again, a lot of parents mess to me, uh, don't want their kids exposed to this. And really, I would have to say, if a t-shirt made your son gay, he was teetering on the edge to begin with. You know what I mean? You were fighting an uphill battle. I think perhaps if anyone's to blame, 
for your son turning out gay, it's probably the dad. It's probably yourself. If you if if that's if you think that's something that could be influenced. Yeah, and we but also had a, a good amount of people saying, "Where is the apparel for straight people?" And I think you're about to drop some very soon. That's true. That's true. I mean, Cux, yeah, would would be straight. But again, I would also say you got to be careful what you would think would be straight clothing because again, like you might think of something like a Affliction or a Tap Out show, but in fact, you might look at that and think it swings hard the other way. You know, I don't think there's any straight or gay clothing, even if it looks outrageously gay. Gay men have incredible style, definitely colorful style. That's sort of uh, with the tie dye there. I think they dress much better than us. I think we could bring some, uh, bring some fashion to Jiu Jitsu. There's really very few clothing brands in Jiu Jitsu that look good at all, look interesting, look exciting. And again, if we could make something that looks cool and deeply offends part of the community, that's, that's what I really, really go for. This has been one of the most offensive things I've ever created. But again, well, I don't know why you're so insecure about it. Like if you're out there pulling guard, if you're out, like we're grappling, we're grappling, you know? Some of us shirtless, some of us not. Some of us with B cream on, some of us not. We're gonna have the full range. I think we've got three different rash guard designs, at least two different uh, short designs. Uh, I believe we're in negotiations with Target. Target are gonna pick that up. They're gonna be the first MA1 launch in a Target store. I think they were definitely very interested in it. But yeah, again, B team, B team, we don't have a pride month. It's, it's, it's we're pride for all year, you know? Speak, speaking of another place where it's pride, it's pride year, every year would be Thailand, somewhere I just came back from. Uh, interestingly enough, a lot of people go to Thailand, they go on these wild vacations, guys want to dabble in a bit of Muay Thai, obviously you've got some MMA there, uh, and steroid vacations, because again, allegedly, not that I would know, that when you go to the pharmacies, they ask for the little book, you can, uh, you can swipe all the way through, and you'll come across some in interesting substances, such as Trambolone. Trembolone, there are a lot of rumors that people, Trembolone make you do some weird stuff. Like it can make you act irrational, it can mess with your mental health. There are people out there that say it can make you, uh, it can encourage a gay experience. And that's the argument or, or the excuse, build that in for later. Why, <laughs> if you go to Thailand and do some Trembolone, you might have an experience with a lady boy. But again, a lot of people do that in Thailand. A lot of people do have experience with Lady Boy. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think it's uh, I think it's pretty cool. I think it's along the lines of the cuck thing. If you're that confident that you could pull that off, all for it, yeah. right? All we, for it. We had a couple of close friends who had some good encounters in this last trip. That's true. That's yeah. true. I think you might have given it away there with close friends, but yeah, we definitely in the. Oh, I just came back from Thailand. We had a camp out there. Always a wild experience. Again, I would say most people come back from Thailand with one of two perhaps even two experiences. That would be a staph infection and a ladyboy experience. Those two things are paramount. Uh, I don't think you've been to Thailand unless you've come back with either. I don't know whether I had, I had a recent bursitis issue where my bursa was infected with staph, had to get some IV antibiotics and stuff. I was feeling like a massive pussy about it. I had to take two weeks off of training, but then we saw recently Tim Schultz, MMA fighter training at Bangtao. I'm plugging Bangtao. I'm not warning you of its uh, staff there. Staff's present at every gym in Thailand just because of the because of the humidity, humidity, I think people out partying, going wild and stuff, immune, immunosuppressed, you know, maybe the steroids immunosuppressed too. Um, but yeah, Tim had this staph infection in his foot that just kept getting worse and worse and worse. If you want to check it out, Tim bought MMA on Instagram. You probably already seen it. Uh, I've looked at the pictures a couple times, but it's too disturbing for me to keep going back and looking at. But yeah, Tim, ultimately, had to fly to Australia because uh, I didn't think Thailand could look after him because they were talking about cutting his leg off because they were worried that the staff had gone through. So it'll go into your muscle and then it'll go through to your bone. If staff's in your bone, you got to cut that limb off or I believe you're gonna die. I believe you are actually gonna die. They flew him back to Australia and I believe it was a doctor on vacation in Thailand, I could be butchering this story entirely, that went to check him out in hospital, said, oh, this shit's real, real bad. He got him like a, a first class flight back to Australia, so obviously he could lay down on the leg. Gets to Australia, ultimately they had to remove all the skin up into his upper thigh and um, some, some, it wasn't too deep into his muscle, but yeah, it was definitely well on its way there. But that's, that's one of the worst things that you could come back from Thailand with. That would be right up there with uh, gonorrhea, chlamydia, other things obviously super common in Thailand. Yeah, but again, I don't know why the staff's so bad out there, humidity, 
immunosuppressed. I know you can buy antibiotics over the counter there, so I don't know if people are pumping them down, creating some antibiotic resistant infections. Um, I did just hear about a, a medically resistant form of ringworm. That is definitely concerning. Had a few outbreaks of ringworm in my time. Usually cure it like most other skin infections I have wherever they are in my body with a bit of bleach and a credit card scratching uh, session to clear it up, kill it straight away. That'll kill ringworm straight away, but I'm not sure about this new medically resistant one. Another warning for ringworm, don't go to your pharmacy and ask for the ringworm treatment. Whatever medication they give you that says ringworm on it doesn't work. You have to go athlete, the athlete's foot medication. So bizarre. If you go, I've had this so many, well, I had this a few times before I realized. If you put the ringworm treatment on from a CVS or a fucking Walgreens, the ringworm will go away and come back. But if you put the athlete's foot one on, it goes away, it stays away. Ringworm's pretty harmless, but fuck comes back yeah. again and again and again it'll fucking torture you but yeah it's horrible horrible skin infections in thailand thailand for me personally we had a great time out there we filmed some stuff for street x uh, we filmed some stuff with lady boys lady boys are a great time and i think it's something um people here could learn a lot from i think if you are transphobic go to thailand hang out with a lady boy test your urges because again some of these lady boys are absolutely beautiful you know <laughs> people make the joke that men do everything better i think even they make even better ladies you know but we were hanging out with them what i love about the lady boy culture in thailand is that like if we're at a bar and there are a few lady boys there and one or two of the guys in your group are a bit like nervous a bit uncomfortable around them they will go out of their way to really make them uncomfortable my brother was frightened one of them took a great liking to my brother my brother's like six seven six eight she was really into him i think because he's tall because fuck he's ugly it must be because he was tall and she was really pushing pushing herself on him making him quite uncomfortable and again that's something that i think makes a lady boy one of the boys because we like to attack each other we like to make each other uncomfortable we like to go out of our way to ruin our friends days potentially weekends potentially weeks we like to remind them of mistakes they've made horrible things they've done and i think that's what really truly makes lady boys feel like one of the boys you know obviously yeah. if a friend wants to bring his missus or you hang you, a girl's like i want to hang out with the boys i'm one of the boys you're not unless you're a lady boy. Speaking of homoerotic activities, Ivy Jeff Worlds is on this weekend. Um, again, I'm gonna watch it. I'm not afraid to test my boundaries. I think the only way you really know if you like something is to give it a go one time. So I will be watching Ivy Jeff Worlds this weekend. Obviously, I'm joking. I've watched Worlds for a long time. Uh, it just goes for a long fucking time. And that's really, Worlds is, I mean, if you've got friends competing, that's a five, that's a five day yeah. experience. It's like, fuck, man, I don't like anything that much. I love cocaine. And even at day four of a coke bender, I'm like, bro, we need some sleep at this point, you know? So five days of Giggy Worlds, that's really, that's really a test. But again, Australia, people are watching cricket. Cricket lasts for fucking days. Cycling, Tour de France and shit. I don't want to watch the cycling. I just want to watch the drug use and that. But <laughs> if you can watch that, I guess you can't complain too much about Gear Worlds. Again, even the no gear events last a while. ADCC lasted two days, and I'm pretty sure three of those days were a Hall of Fame ceremony. So you really, no matter how much you love something, if it goes on too long, it's a test. Again, if you're obviously, a lot of people are just going to watch the Black Belt Worlds finals, yeah. you know? A lot of people, again, all the weight divisions, all the athletes in there, like, how the fuck are you meant to keep up with all these names each and every year? Really, you're going to have a handful of people you know. You're going to hope they make the Black Belt Worlds finals. You're going to tune in and watch. Um, I'm trying to think of the first ones I ever watched. Obviously, we were watching IBJJF Worlds long before even Flow Grappling had it. I believe the, it's on Flow Grappling this weekend, uh, well, this week, if you want to watch your, your teammates and shit. But yeah, there's obviously, I talk shit about the gi all the time, but there are excited gi matches. Again, there's a guy right now, Tynan Dalpra, I think he's just unquestionably the best gi guy in the world. Yeah. Just absolutely dominating. Again, you can make a case for Nicholas Marigali. If you ask Nicholas Marigali who the best athlete is, he's not gonna hesitate. He's gonna say himself every time. Again, totally unique voice in the sport. Nicholas Marigali, never seen anything like that before. But I think Tynan Dalpra is the most impressive to me because He's historically in some of the weight divisions that are the most difficult to win based on uh, size of the division, based on population density. Those lighter divisions are the toughest and typically the most exciting ones. Yeah. 
I personally, uh, it's hard to tell if I'm just biased or not, but to me, uh, less people seem to care about gi wells, but obviously I'm in an echo chamber. I moved more into nogi, so I hear more about nogi. Um, but you really, I don't know. You guys have to tell me again. If you watch it on YouTube, leave some comments. Has the energy changed? Are less people excited? I sneakily got drunk on drugs, perhaps one of the flow employees, and tried to lure out some of the uh, information about viewership. And I know definitely uh, viewership's lower for IBGF Worlds finals than even an undercard on a W. No, that doesn't mean it doesn't matter. It just means not many people are watching it. Um, but yeah, very, very interesting uh, turn of events for Worlds this year. I would argue that after Yasada's attack on Nogi Worlds, the way they followed these guys to the gym, I'm interested to see what happens to athletes surrounding this event in terms of out of competition testing. Will they ever randomly out of competition test an athlete or will they only randomly out of competition test the guys that said they had, they, they were gonna miss their flight and had to unfortunately miss the, the medal ceremony and the urine test. But yeah, I'm real interested to see. I would argue that the only reason you wouldn't do IBGF Worlds if you were a gi guy is if you were taking performance enhancing drugs like the rest of us. That's the only argument I could see. I don't know why you wouldn't do it. If you want to go down the history books, you want to be a Bouchesha, a guy like that, you want to get as many world titles as possible. Again, flow grappling, who's number one? If they keep putting on gi matches, fuck, it's cool. You get a belt, you get some followers and shit. But again, in terms of etching yourself in the record books, people are going to count your world titles, which is obviously unfortunate for me. I will continue to count my followers, not my world titles. But yeah, I don't see any reason, again, why you wouldn't just keep fucking dominating, winning, submitting everyone. I think there's really no argument to be made why you wouldn't get involved. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense in gi worlds again yeah again jiu-jitsu is uh it's, it's a lot of people are getting sponsored by anti-aging clinics these days yeah. i think it's just like people are fearless now like i think uh it's it's so no i remember I, back in the day i thought i'd do it as a joke i was like oh fuck i'll get sponsored by a trt company and everyone will be like ha, ha, fuck craig's just joking but obviously i would have actually been taking steroids but nowadays guys will just have ways to well on their shorts and stuff yeah. and it's like yeah we could all pretend that um maybe they're doing some prp therapy yeah. something like that but really again if you're dealing with an anti-aging clinic you are indeed probably on trt i know i spoke to an anti-aging clinic about getting prp in my penis add a couple of inches and stuff add a bit of health and vitality to it yeah but ultimately i was too afraid instead you did the trend oh. and became a little gay. <laughs> yeah yeah i was afraid of one needle penetrating another but, <laughs> but yeah trend trend Trent, Trent, that would be sick if Trent was so uh, open, like you weren't just on TRT sponsorship, you had a Trent Balloon sponsorship as well. I am curious to try it. I really think if you have some gay tendencies, it would be a good thing to do to see how much it might bolster them. Yeah. You're, you could find out if your tendencies are actual real fantasies you got. That's true. Yourself. Trent's the one that's wild because they call, what do they call it, Trent cough. It's like if I've heard stories I've heard stories about guys getting uh, tran injections and hit a blood vessel and stuff and the, the liquid goes and yeah. it feels like you're drowning and shit and coughing yeah. and stuff. I think I heard that on that Derek More Place More Dates. Yeah, yeah talking about yeah, that, yeah. Hey, that's, that is quite frightening. I think uh, that's, that's basically a near-death experience. Oh, fuck. Okay. I, ba I, I barely want to win enough to do cardio, let alone if I'm having a coughing fit thinking I'm dying, being like, fuck, I need this for the gold medal, you know? Yeah. But... It would, yeah, it would be interesting. Again, for those that say on the internet that judicial athletes don't do tran, we know for a fact they do. I'm not gonna name names, but we know. Multiple people will do tran for jujitsu. If they, I mean, if they think rightly or wrongly it's gonna give them an edge, they will do it. I think a lot of people look at jujitsu athletes and think they're more intelligent than they are. They will take fucking anything. I remember an athlete named Craig Jones that heard Hallow Teston would make your dick bigger but deeply damage your liver. Maybe he did that. I'm not, I'm not, too, not too sure about that one. I'll be right back, folks. We are back after a short intermission. We had a quick break. We had to, we had to paint more of this mysterious place we're in where we're, we're filming this. I did listen to some of what we spoke about earlier, and I did hear a lot of my heavy breathing. I know you guys are gonna comment on that. 
That is just sleep apnea while I'm awake. That is from a lot of steroid abuse, cocaine use, uh, just general stimulants, and obviously a lot of benzos as well. That's how I travel. That's how I fly internationally in economy. Xanax in economy puts you at least premium economy, takes away some of the pain of the travel. But we were talking before the break about um, coaches, and we were sort of thinking about the analogy between jiu-jitsu coaches and cult leaders. Pretty similar stuff, pretty similar stuff. We're close to Waco as well, so. Very, yeah, very similar figures uh, in this sport. Everyone, everyone's probably in, either trained at and left. If you're retarded, you've probably trained at and you're still training at gyms where the, the head coach is kind of like a, a cult-like figure. A lot of these gyms, gym leaders, cult leaders, have a lot of stuff in common, right? They have um, outfits. They maybe even have their own language. And also a key one is either partner sharing. Uh, when I say partner, I mean wives, sisters, daughters, mums, uh, all being shared amongst the crew or just their cult leader is actually banging away at everyone's everyone's partners, family members, whatever. Don't forget a little bit of physical abuse as well. Physical abuse is in there too. Some, I mean, if we're talking about uh, some of the great cult leaders, obviously I share the name of one of them, Jim Jones, the Jonestown Massacre. Um, that is a big one. That's probably one of the that's probably one of the craziest stories I've heard about. I watched a couple of documentaries. I even listened to the tape of when they did the mass suicide, which is which is pretty pretty yeah. traumatic. Pretty crazy, yeah. But it also reminded me of have you ever had a Brazilian guy come into a seminar at your school and they start talking about um, they do a very passion passionate speech again at the end of some of them can't even wait to get out of the way they'll throw it at the start of a seminar some of them throw it in at the end they talk about honor respect discipline loving your wife um not doing steroids and then the second the seminar ends we're doing drugs and going straight to the brothel obviously contrast in character there i think the contrast is very similar with cult leaders too do as i say not as i do but yeah, I don't know what it is about martial arts uh, and cults. Charles is an interesting group of people, you know? Yeah, I think it's just people worship the, the gym leader like they do worship a, a cult leader. I remember a guy I trained with in Taiwan. I don't remember his full name, Dan. I think his Instagram's Dan, Danimal. I remember him telling me about some funny stuff about where he like, he tries to keep his students in line, right? And he'll every now and then throw out a joke. He knows it's just a terrible joke. And if he gets laughter around the room, he'll be like, what the fuck's wrong with you guys? That's not funny at all. Like he'll test the waters to see. And again, if you're a gym that has a graduation, like sort of a ceremony, maybe once, twice a year, everyone gets promoted. Usually your jokes will hit very hard leading up to those times, you know, like, Again, people quite, I mean, I don't know how to quite phrase this, you know, obviously you leave Scientology, you're gonna miss out on a, a few movie deals, you know, there's, you're gonna take a few hits. I think some of the jujitsu gyms out there, you leave that gym, you are gonna miss a few opportunities, but hopefully you will find yourself in a healthier mental state. The crazy thing is as well, when you leave a team, like you could, um, you could be training with a guy for five to 10 years. You literally could have known this guy maybe one third of your entire life. You think you're friends. And then maybe for whatever reason you leave the gym and you train at a different gym. Whether it's even in the same city, sometimes you get ex excommunicated when you just move cities. Wow. Like people will be like, what's wrong? Like, what, how, could, how could you leave us? You know, like it really is. It really is like leaving a cult. So many gyms are like that. You know, these gyms, some, some people think they're like a big happy family, you know? And that's where the problem starts there. Uh, yeah, that's true. It replaces replaces uh, replaces a father figure. I think a lot of a lot of martial arts, specifically jujitsu. I don't know. Obviously, I'm a taekwondo yellow belt expert in taekwondo and yellow belt in judo. Obviously, multi multi sport athlete. Yeah. Again, you've seen me dunk. Um, 
But I think a lot of the martial arts, the jiu-jitsu coach replaces people's father figures. And you'll see a lot of young guys that lack a father figure get drawn in by like a, not even necessarily a charismatic coach, but just like an interesting, an interesting guy, a peculiar guy. You just see these really strange relationships. You see it a lot of jiu-jitsu, for sure. Yeah, I think a lot of jiu-jitsu guys do have some daddy issues. Um, and we've seen it cultivate in the highest levels as well. That, yeah, that's, that's for sure. That's for sure. These people have a dependency on their coach. You've got to be careful not to abuse your privileges. You know, like um, I've spoken to guys that are just opening their own school and they always they give me this sort of speech where they're like, hey, at my school, things will be different. I will not take advantage of any of my members. For the most part, that, that just means that's an innocent thing. Some, some of you guys are going to interpret that as take advantage of your female members. Of course, that is a that is a factor as well. But what I mean is they'll say, hey, no one's gonna be working unpaid in my gym. No one's gonna be doing me any favors. Six months later, you'll see that coach put up a post, be like, hey, I'm moving house this weekend. Who wants to help me move? Like people will literally do anything for these guys. They'll be their chauffeur, they'll wash their clothes, drop them at the airport. And as a coach, you really gotta try your best not to take it advantage of these people, because really, a lot of the time they're just doing that because they want to be closer within the cold. They want to be closer to the leader. You know what I mean? They want to they want to climb their way to the top because that means they're probably going to get their belt sooner. Yeah, that that stripe comes that month. You might see a couple guys show up at the gym, show up to help the instructor move, chauffeur. That that shit's so bizarre, hey. I mean, I make sure that every time a student drops me to the airport, it's a different student um, each week. And obviously, whichever student I allow to do my laundry. I mean, at first, it's a trust thing from the coach, too. You've got to ensure that they're not going to steal your underwear. Yeah. Some of the people in the gym, again, Nicky Ryan, every time he washes my clothes, something goes missing. Something goes missing on the way back. Or something comes back with a new stain on it. Usually a skid mark. Nicky Ryan might be trying on the underwear. But yeah, in terms of cults, cults very pervasive, pervasive in the jiu-jitsu community. I swear some of these guys must be studying cults throughout history, trying to work out how to cultivate their own cult. Um, I swear, again, they've got they've got the they got the mission they got the mission path down for it. Again, you want to wear a fancy uniform, you want to be wearing something odd, you want to throw in. A foreign language of any sort or even your own code words and then of course you're not really a cult leader unless you're having sex with other people's partners or your students those three factors i think very common within the jiu-jitsu community and again it's something obviously i think only black belt should be allowed to do if it quacks like a duck if it walks like a duck Probably is a duck, bud. <laughs> we've got to respect. <laughs> we've got to respect the roots, you know. And again, like I said, everyone says things will be different in their gym. Things will be different when they get a black belt. We all say that, but we all abuse our privileges anyway. Um, but enough about cults. We're talking about weird stuff with teams. Um, I really, I try to make B team pretty, not very weird, you know. Like again, we have some rules in there. Like if you guys watch the rules video. No students are allowed to address me by my first name, make eye contact, sit within five feet of me. But B team, I think, is one of the less weird places. Every gym's gonna have sort of cliques, cool kids, uh, people gonna fight to get in those sort of uh, groups. But yeah, B team, I think, is pretty relaxed. We just wanna train hard and talk a lot of shit to each other. That's what, that's, at this point, that's what keeps me in the game. People be like, oh, Craig, are you still driven to be the best? And I'm like, I'm not really driven to be the best. I'm driven to remain better than the people I'm better than. That's a pretty big group of the population. And I, w I just want to absolutely slander and banter with anyone I'm already better than. That's what motivates me. It's, it's that if there's someone in the gym that I can hit with a bullshit submission, I can fuck with them a little bit. A submission that later in the day they think about it. I just got to stay better than that guy because I don't want to pay for the words. I don't want to pay for my sins, you know, like I've done a lot of horrible things to J-Rod and what keeps me training is the fact that I have to stay better than this kid because he's probably going to severely injure or humiliate me on his come up. 
But I think, again, given how, given I'm getting old, Jiu-Jitsu ages you in dog years. And he's, he, the way he bounced back from this recent shoulder injury frightens me how Same. good this kid's going to get. Like five weeks, he's already back on the mats fucking going crazy. Yeah, we saw, I mean, we saw Nicky Rhodes clean drug test, and then the way Jay Rod handled that injury, I'm just like, these, you just have to give it up. Like, a lot of the times we want to say these people are on steroids because it's an easy way to not admit how terrible your own genetics are. Like, we've all seen it. I mean, again, you look at Hyacin Rita, and there's, no, there's not a drug in the world that's going to turn me into Hyacin Rita, you know? Obviously, in terms of uh, packing some heat, we've, I've tried. I've tried to, to gather his level of inches, but there's no drug in the world that's going to turn me into Hyacin Rita. At some point, you have to accept, just because someone's faster, jumps higher, like, uh, stronger, better looking, we can't just jump to the conclusion of steroids. Like, you just have to really look within yourself and blame your parents because you just have terrible genetics, you know? And again, some natural athletes are so far superior to you, even a lifetime of steroids, you're going to struggle to catch up to these guys. And I, I know for a fact because I try. <laughs> you know, like, again, yeah. Nikki Rod, Jay Rod, crazy genetics. Hi, Samrita. Again, crazy genetics. The burglar found that out the hard way. We did, we have to talk about this other thing, right? There is an event that goes on in Austin called Enigma. And again, I'm only bringing this up. I have to bring this shit up because Gordon's always poking on the internet. He's always throwing shit out there. Most of the time it goes absolutely awful for him. You know, he enters a, he enters a battle of wits and he's completely unarmed. You know, at some, at some points I wonder if he's like, uh, I like for his sake, I wish he was playing a character. Because it's one of the most, be watching, trying to understand the way his brain works and processes the world is one of the most fascinating things ever. You know, like sometimes I think that he's bait baiting me this hard with the way he behaves. You know, like I th I'm thinking like, fuck, is, he, is this the next level troll? Because some of the stuff he says is so like, uh, it's got to be satire at some points where you're like, this guy can't be serious with this shit. Like, is he, like, is this Matrix level? Like, I think I'm fucking with him, but he's actually running the long game. He's laughing at me taking the bait or something because it's too easy. It's too easy at this point where he'll throw a comment out. No matter what he says, no matter what happens, he's like, ha ha, I beat you. That's the extent of our interactions. And it's like, I think that could, this could go on until the end of time. This could go on until one of us has a heart attack in our mid thirties from again, uh, overuse of anabolic drugs. I got a head start on him with the cocaine, but obviously the, the anxiety and stress in that man's life is gonna bring, bring him to an end much sooner. But again, he's talked shit about us at this recent Enigma event, right? I don't mind really when he talks shit about me. Like I find it pretty, again, like I just said, it's pretty entertaining. But when he's talking shit about the guy, just innocent guys in the team and stuff, it's like, uh, it's kind of like, I think in, in poor taste, you know what I mean? So Enigma, John puts up a post, he's like, we went 6-0 and at Enigma, New Wave went 6-0. and Gordon posted about how we, they beat us at Enigma. He said something about international events. You guys, you guys probably saw it on his story. But the real enigma is who is actually on Team New Wave, because it's kind of, it confuses me, because it feels like if a, if a B team guy beats someone that trains with Danaher, that guy's not New Wave. Nope. And if, a new, if one of their guys beats a B team guy, immediately that guy's New Wave. Because I know for a fact, on the night of Enigma, there were guys, and potentially guys that are really actually been with Danaher a long time. I'm not gonna name any names because he's my friend as well, but like these guys lose and it doesn't count as a loss. And again, you gotta give it up to the absolute goat of marketing in this sport. A lot of people will say to me, they'll be like, oh, Greg, where did you learn to market yourself? Like how do, how do you differentiate yourself as a completely as a guy that's never won anything, how are you making money in this sport? You must be a, just a brilliant marketer. And I say, hey, we've got to give it up to the GOAT of marketing. They've obviously got the GOAT athlete, Gordon, but they've also got the GOAT marketer, John Danaher. And again, it's, I try to emulate some of the things he does. Like I know when we were at DDS, we had the DDS, the Danaher Death Squad, and the juniors. And if you were not competing super well, you were considered a junior. And that's brilliant because that's an easy way to not absorb a loss. And like, I look at it and I think, how could we replicate that with the B team? 
but then we really wouldn't have a team. Like, the, we can't just select three to four people on the B team and say, oh, this is the A squad. Fuck everyone else, they don't matter. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's a brilliant marketing strategy and you just gotta take your hat off. You gotta tip your hat to the marketing goat, John Danaher there, yeah. But I mean, the Enigma thing was funny. Enigma's local event, a lot of guys compete in it. I'm not, I don't wanna discredit the event. It's a great event. For the most part, I believe, they'll have some of the boys from the ADCC as in the referees. They'll referee it, so it'll be a high standard of refereeing. They have a live stream and stuff. Guys from around the country will occasionally do supervise there. They just had Andy Varela. But again, it is like, to what degree that event is important, it's really hard to put a perspective on anything anymore because like, Worlds is going on right now. Obviously, Gi Worlds is huge. To what degree do you value a single accomplishment? If you only want to win gold to make money, even some guys that win ADCC end up broke. They don't sell any DVDs, don't sell any seminars. Like, it's really hard to put a value on what achievements you want to take. Because at the end of the day, you don't, no one's in it for money, but if you win, you want to make some fucking money. Thanks. You know what I mean? So it's like Enigma, a uh, great event. I think it's a great event for up-and-comers to practice competing on, to get better experience with a high level of refereeing. But again, I want you guys, if anyone knows, how do we determine who is New Wave, who is uh, just a Hanzo Gracie Austin guy? And speaking about that, right, we had something happen recently. I don't want to throw too much shade at this individual, um, this Dominican individual, but obviously to train with New Wave is exclusive, super exclusive. Hard to get into Roca, Roca, their private training facility. They have Henzo Gracie Austin, Roca training facility. We have guys that have come over from there to train with us. We have no issue with that at all, it's whatever. We've even had guys leave us, go over there, come back. Again, no issue, go, I mean, if you're paying, go wherever you want to go, you know, like we don't really care, but I believe from what I understand, we did have someone try to train at both places at the same time and they received a message from one of the big dogs over there saying, hey, don't come back. If you train a B team, don't come back. What that has created is a situation where if you were to train with B team and then you want to go to Henzo Gracie Austin later, it's going to be very difficult for you. So we've had this guy recently and again, it's, it, it, this is a Hysam reader situation. So we had this viral video. Hysam visited us a year ago, yep. or may, maybe like nine months ago, right? He has obviously joined the team now. Nine months ago, he visited us, and he hit the exact same foot sweep on a guy that he hit on this burglar that tried to break into his car. Diyashi Hirai, the burglar sweep. Again, coming to soon to BGJ Fanatics. But we had this incredible viral video. Hysam comes back. So we share the video again. And this guy starts putting in copyright claims and he's messaging people. He's like, oh my God, guys, can you take it down? I can't let John Danaher see it. This is gonna affect my career. So a guy getting really upset that we're just sharing videos and he's putting copyright claims in. But when you walk in the door to B Team, we don't just have a regular waiver. You sign away, obviously you sign something that says if you get injured in here, you take responsibility for it. But we also have something in there that says that we own the rights to the footage and basically you can't film in there. But this guy is so upset that there's video footage circling, out, circling around of him getting beaten up a B team. And again, it's not, I know skin off his back. Hi, Samrita, African God, taking out this Dominican guy that's probably 145 and not really a high level guy. Yeah. But this guy's putting in copyright claims on our Instagram videos and it's just like, quite frankly, I, I mean, I understand why he's doing it, but I would find it embarrassing. We have had other guys come in, train with us, take pictures with us. Next trip, they come back to Austin, they go back in time and they delete those pictures. If you are one of those guys, I don't mind, like obviously, if you go there, you're gonna get great training. There's no doubt about that. You are gonna get great training. I won't comment on anything else. You are gonna get great training, but you shouldn't really behave like that's kind of, kind of embarrassing, you know, like just own it. Like if you're a talented athlete, John will accept you, even if you've been to B team. So I think just, uh, I mean, it does make us laugh. The, mm -hmm. this, this latest saga with this Dominican guy is fucking honestly hilarious. He's so upset that we're sharing the video. He thinks it's a personal attack on him. Yeah, now it's personal attack for sure. Now it's become a personal <laughs> attack because we could post this every day. We could post this every day. 
It's a good suite, man. It's a good, it's a good you, suite. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta give it up, man. It is a beautiful <laughs> suite by um, Heisenberg. Actually, in fact, you probably helped him clean up the streets of Austin. You actually helped him make this a better place because, again, him practicing on you allowed him to hit it on the burglar. And the burglar maybe even had better defense. It's he did get back up. He, he did get back, get back up. <laughs> Eventually. Eventually. Man, I just got to say, if that kid wants to come back, you can. But now the membership's double. It's a, yeah, it's a double, a double membership. Well, Speaking of to. double memberships, we did implement a rule that I've stolen from another gym around the world. This is an interesting rule, right? When you run a gym, members can't help but fuck each other. Obviously, they can't help but fuck each other. Um, Sometimes that happens though when a member leaves. It becomes uncomfortable when they leave. We have implemented a rule. If you sleep with a member and they ultimately leave, you pay their membership. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Just encourages respect in the training room. Means that if, um, yeah, it just means that you're gonna be behave yourself a bit more in there. You know, you're liable <coughs> for this young man or young lady's membership if you choose to dick him down and scare him away, that's entirely up to you. Can you afford it? Ask yourself, can you afford it? And if you can afford it, ask yourself, is it worth it? I definitely won't be able to afford it after. There's a new rule, I'm just learning the spot right now. I might have to go to New Whip. Freddie's actually $900 <laughs> a month in the hole at this point. Uh, that's actually a lot cheaper than I thought it was gonna be, so <laughs> there goes my paycheck. Well, I mean, you only pay full price if they come. Um, <laughs> we've got, also let's talk about it. Ethan Krellestein went away to compete yeah. in Polaris. Polaris, one of the coolest shows, man. It's one of the original super fight shows, still going strong. This event, Ethan Krellenstein took on Nathan Orchard for the fourth time. It's, this match is crazy to me, because when you, when you hold up their posters, Orchard looks like Ethan 10 years into the future. He, he literally, like guys, go look it up. Look up the poster of this. Ethan is almost 30 with a mullet. Orchard's probably mid 30s. I think so. I don't, want to be, I don't want to be. I don't want to be. I don't want to guess his age too much in case he's younger. <laughs> but it's just. Uh, it's funny. It's actually their fourth match. I think two of the matches have gone to Ethan. The third match was on combat. Was officially a draw. I think Ethan positionally dominated. Couldn't oh. get the finish. No overtime because it was a combat teams event. Match yesterday, ten minute match, and it was Ethan. Ethan did pretty good. We sort of guessed Orchard's strategy. They went to wrestle a bit. Um, he jump guard. Yeah, jump guard as soon as Ethan gets the body lock jumps guard because of course Orchard has a fantastic close guard, but Ethan stayed standing, shook the legs, passed, and then what's so funny is halfway through the match, Orchard goes for some weird choke underneath and the whole tone of the match completely changes. <laughs> so Orchard goes for this like almost like a punch choke guillotine and it must have been on. You know, it's, you know something's on for a second if it bothers you. Like if someone throws up a submission that's bullshit and I, I, don't, even, I don't even notice it. Yeah. I'm not gonna roll any harder afterwards, but you see the tone of the match change. Even the commentary notices this shit, it changes. Ethan goes from just holding now and trying to gradually get attacks in after this choke attempt by Orchard, just starts smothering his face the entire time, like just covering his mouth, doing absolutely brutal shit. It was like a turning point in the match. And it's sort of, it was cringe to watch, but again, 10th uh, Planet guys have great submission defense. I would say, if you can, I mean, you can generalize over teams, I would say their sub offense, sub defense, fantastic. Sometimes if there is something that lacks, it would be positional, positional control, positional uh, wrestling sweeps and stuff. And what we saw take place in this match was basically that. Ethan progressing positionally, Orchard refusing to concede back position at all and just, at the, I mean, for this last part of the match, just letting himself get smothered <laughs> and defending the smothers, but fuck, it was, uh, it was funny to watch. It did look personal. Even the commentators afterwards was like, was this something personal? And Ethan, in all his Canadian glory, is like, oh, absolutely not. <laughs> We're completely friends and stuff, yeah. But it was, it was an exciting match. Props to Ethan. Probably the most impressive performance of the night was the Polish, the Polish killer, yeah. Matus Sashinsky, he took out Jed. Jed is a local UK sort of legend. He's done well. He's been able to beat some big names. Like Sishinsky. less than 10 seconds? No, it was, I think it was under a minute. Under a minute? That's pretty quick. Pretty quick. But yeah, Jed, who I've not really, I've trained with Jed. I've trained with Sashins Sashinsky, both obviously pretty tough guys. Sashinsky's just got this killer footlock and he was able to hit it on Jed and it looked like he broke his foot. 
real quick. So, I mean, shout out to Sashinsky on that. We've seen Sashinsky. Fuck, he's a hard name to yeah. pronounce. <laughs> I'm glad you said it, not I'm, me. We're not going to let Nicky Rod say this, <laughs> word, eh? But we've seen him in high-level competition. He was able to beat William Tacker, and he's lost two times to Dante Leon. But again, it's going to be interesting to see how he does it. ADCC trials. It's also going to be interesting to see who he faces next at Polaris. He asked for Gary Tonin, but unfortunately, I think because Polaris is on fight paths, due to the con uh, the constructs of Gary Tonin's one championship yep. contract, he would never be able to compete on a fight pass event. So it'll be interesting to see who they could uh, find to take him on next. It certainly won't be me, that's for sure. Hopefully, it's that guy with no feet. <laughs> That, the guy with no feet, yeah, that would be interesting. That's eh? the only way you could survive against this guy. Hopefully we get a good look at that finish. That might be Jed even... after this, eh? <laughs> yeah, poor. I honestly hope we get a good view of that submission because yesterday they couldn't seem to get the camera angle right, so hopefully something comes out so we can see that. Yeah, only the only angle I've seen of this match was really, like, unfortunately quite shitty. Like, yeah. you couldn't really... You couldn't really see. You couldn't really reconstruct it from the time at which she grabbed the foot to the break was, like, half a second. Yeah, so it's so like we fast. really couldn't see what happened there but again yeah i don't want to take on any young killers like that with without much of a, a social media following <laughs> i want the most famous least talented people that's the recipe for success in life is always take on the de you lose your honor as you age yep. when you when you're in your 20s you're like give me the best guy in the world i don't care who it is i'm gonna take him i'm gonna kill him you hit 30, you're like, you know what, are they going to pay me well? What am I going to get out of this, you know? Yeah. How tough is the guy? That's sort of where the attitude changes. But again, I am taking on a tough guy for Lee Penner. But best guy in the world, right? Best guy, yeah, best guy in the world. And really, it's a marketing, it's a strategy. It's a business decision, this one, right? Because, of course, Philippe Penner is the pound-for-pound pound goat. If I beat the pound-for-pound pound goat, that means I can retire as pound-for-pound pound goat. And that's... That's incredible. I mean, retire on top. Why not? You know, like you, <laughs> you see these guys hang in there too long. You know, like obviously, I was going to retire after ADCC. Unfortunately, the uh, referees robbed me. Kind and only got 17 penalties. Deserve 25. <laughs> I mean, that's a completely. That's just a fact. Like, yeah. why are we even going to negotiate that? But yeah, so if I beat Philippe Penn, I can retire on top. You know, I think everyone should pretend to retire after every match. It's a guaranteed way to get more money for the next match, yeah. you know? Absolutely. I mean, guaranteed way to get somebody to call you out because they just think you're out of the game, so. That's true, that's true. Yeah. I, I want to become Dylan Dennis. That's that's what's in my future here. Speak, speaking of matches, obviously these days I'm not just a athlete myself. I professionally ride the coattails of superior athletes. I've been doing that some time for Volkanovski. I had the privilege of doing that for Israel Adesanya recently. We can announce this today because it, uh, it just was announced, but I spent a month with Izzy in New Zealand. I spent, uh, sadly, only this time, only a few days with Volkanovski in uh, Wollongong, in the Gong, one of the most culturally diverse, uh, culturally rich parts of Australia. Um, incredible, incredible location. I love my time there. But I've, obviously, this recent trip got to train with both of those guys, help Volks prepare for Yair. Um, again, props to Vox, I've got to say this again. He's gone from the complete opposite opponent, Islam Makachev. He's as, essentially the opposite to Yair Rodriguez, and he's turned that around, I think, in a four-month period. So, like, shout out to that guy. He just wants to compete. He wants to fight everyone all the time. Another guy that's the same is Izzy. Izzy wants to fight four times a year. Guy is a beast, absolute beast. I got to train with him, got to see what Izzy's jiu-jitsu was like. We already know what Volk's wrestling and jiu-jitsu is like. We've seen so much of it. We've seen his submission defense. It's incredible. Volk's is tough, man. Like, he feels like, what am I right now, 205? Um, yeah, you're like 209, buddy. 209. Yeah, you're feeling a little heavy. In the 209. Yeah. No. <laughs> you're a little heavy. <laughs> <laughs> He's, uh, he, man, Volk's feels like a guy that's 185. Jeez. Honestly. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's crazy. That guy's a fucking monster. Again, another case of a man with ge genetics far superior to me. Yeah. I'm just like, how the <laughs> fuck are these guys so superior to me? Probably years of partying, breaking down my body has not helped me, but got to train with Izzy again. Izzy was fucking cool as fuck. You know what I mean? Obviously, superstar, basically as close to Conor McGregor level as you can get in MMA right now after his win over Alex. But yeah, super cool guy. Love training with him. 
really uh, he watches a lot of grappling mm -hmm. to be honest I know you, like you wouldn't you wouldn't see that you don't see him post about it a lot but he does watch a lot of grappling spend time at Atos hopefully we can lure him to B team but I got to travel with both these guys to Puerto Rico and meet the Pool brothers the reason they went and we can announce this now is because they're the two first athletes uh, for Prime yep Prime is a drink created by Logan Paul, KSI. It is a great tasting drink. It's a pretty, it's a pretty sweet drink. It's sort of like a sports recovery drink. They also had an energy drink there. I preferred the energy drink. They made an energy drink. I needed it in Puerto Rico. One of those nights I had like two hours sleep and yeah. we had to train the next day. It was a big one. Pounded the energy drink, pushed through the session. So the energy drink tasted great, way better than fucking Red Bull V or anything like that, eh, hey, your mother. What other fucking drinks are out here? You know Monster. I'm caffeine free, brother. You know, yeah. you know I'm high on life. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> what a fucking maniac, eh? Hey. <laughs> Anyone that doesn't drink coffee is completely deranged, eh? Hey, like, barely keeping it together. Uh, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> but these guys, these, um, we were over there training. Logan jumped in to train. The, the footage would come out. Logan trained with Izzy, trained with Volks, trained with me. We just did some wrestling, grappling. Um, I saw Jake do a bit of boxing downstairs. They have a crazy nice facility in Puerto Rico. They did what we couldn't do. We moved there. We tried to open a gym with there for nine months. We could not get it done. People wouldn't call us back, wouldn't show us buildings, offer us exorbitant fucking rental fees. And then obviously things went to shit down there. People started fucking attacking each other, trying to kill each other in Puerto Rico. So we left, team split up. But yeah, these guys got it done. They got a place. I have to say, fucking incredible spot. Yeah, it looks Great massive. Spot. Maybe VT moves to Puerto Rico, you know? Maybe that was my plan all along. Back to you the motherland. Back to the jungle <laughs> to be Colonel Kurtz myself. <laughs> but yeah, super cool guys. One cool thing, um, they go given these prime chains, and I think there's, I think only like four or five guys have them, but they were fucking sick. Like when they announced the signing, they made a video with the chains. You guys will see it in the video that's on Logan's Instagram right now. Really cool, really cool. I don't know if I could pull off a fucking blinged out chain. Like I'd be looking at myself and I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd take it. Yeah. And I'd wear it, but fuck, I don't know. Yeah, I can't I don't know take about, myself seriously with a chain. I don't know about that type of jewelry, but that type of jewelry on the, on the shirt looks nice. Oh yeah, this yeah. is as close to a crown as yeah. I'm ever gonna get, yeah. eh? That looks pretty good. You could rock that. I will rock that, I will wear that, yeah, I know. <laughs> get a few strange looks in the street, but no stranger than keep jujitsu gay. If you don't know what the shirt is because you're listening to it at home, just check out the YouTube thumbnail. I'm sure you uh, put two and two together. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, in terms of what's coming up, just back in the swing of the Philippe Pena camp. Honestly, I'll be honest, I haven't trained too much for the last two months and I've been fucking enjoying life, you know? Pounding the cigarettes. Smoking cigarettes, drinking the yeah, 40s. Yeah. Um, just living life like a retired man. Acquiring uh, very expensive drug habits. <laughs> but now, I mean, like I always tell the boys in here, I'm like, anything that elevates the heart, right, is good for the heart. That'll strengthen it, you know? <laughs> Go for a run, your heart rate skyrockets. Do a few bumps, it'll skyrocket. It's obvious if it's good stuff. It's Follow good the stuff. Science, it's bad bro. stuff, it won't. <laughs> but you'll take a shit, that's for sure. Um, yeah, back in the swing of things, I come back to roll. With Nicky Rod, Heisen Rita, absolutely, like, I look at those guys and I think they're 100 pounds heavier than me. I think they're only 15 to 20, but that's enough, you know? Like, yeah. I should never have to roll at the old age of 31 with anyone heavier than myself. But yeah, that's a, that about wraps it up, eh? <laughs> Two more weeks training here for Philippe, then Vegas, then Corner and Volkanovski, then entering a black hole on the Vegas Strip. But that's it. We had episode four and a half. I reckon this one gets us to for the full five inches. Guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, like and subscribe. Obviously, we're trying to get 100K subscribers. We're in a personal battle with another channel to get there. Um, a personal feud, if you will. Help us get over the line. 100K would be great. We get a big silver plaque. That's fitting. You can hang it next to our silver ADCC medals. Again, only me and Nikki Rod. Nicky Ryan, pull your weight around here, you know, get us a silver medal or two, we'd appreciate it. Um, if you want to sponsor the podcast, send an email to bteam at elsegundostudios.com. No matter what your product is, I will shill it and I will endorse it 100%. It could be anything. It could be criminal, it could be absolutely illegal, it could be something as useless as a cold lunch. But if you're paying me, I will happily endorse your product at the expense of my ethics, morality, at the expense of the B team, strong branding and reputation, 
I will do it for the right price, and the price isn't very much. Thank you for listening to the El Segundo podcast. Don't forget, fuck cry Jones. <laughs>